you know, we travel all over the place, all over the Midwest, all over Canada, and we're always trying to find new lakes. And obviously we go back and revisit old lakes that we've been to in the past. This particular body of water that we're on today in Manitoba, I've never heard of it before. We're at Q Lake Lodge and as part of a forge, what I have heard about this body of water is that there's a lot of big walleyes in here. That's also probably some of Manitoba's best smallmouth bass fishing for numbers. I mean, there's people that have been coming up to, from Arkansas and different places down south just for the smallmouths. Feels like a really remote lake where it feels like a flying lake, but you can drive to it. I tell you what, I've driven up to Thompson. I've driven up to Lynn Lake. I've been all over the place and we're only three, three and a half hours north and east of Winnipeg. And so it's really a hop, skip and a jump to get to this. Just off the beaten path far enough, I think where it misses a lot of people, but I tell you what, it's not that terribly hard to get to, so it's pretty intriguing. Usually if there's 50 fish stacked off the edge of a point, they're usually white fish, but they come out one here, one there, come one, two, three at a time, and they're spread out in an area, then that's usually what the walleyes look like. There's one. Feels Tell like a pretty grab. good one here, Jason. Do you want me to grab the, the net? Yeah, go on ahead and get the net. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, nice walleye. Oh, nice fish here. Yeah, I got a glimpse of it here. Oh yeah, bring them right to the net here. Oh, come on. There we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, that's a beautiful fish. These fish are nice and dark color. Yeah, I just love the color on these. Oh, yeah. There you go, bud. Cool. All right, let's get her back in the water there. All right. Well, that was nice. Yeah, just classic Canadian shield fishing, all kinds of structure. There's big bars and points, no lake map. So you just go out and fish. It's like traveling back in time in the sense you just, you know, trying to find spots just by going over them and we found this spot it looked fishy and we've been going up and down on it and right I mean, and as you guess there's walleyes here <laughs> kind of drove around it's kind of unusual structure you know we've got a shallow like ridge here that's kind of you know in between some deeper water in between the shore but definitely a lot of fish holding on this and let's catch cool. another one all right let's get to it you know, this is one part of the world i've just never been you know i've been in the white shell chain and i've fished the winnipeg river fished around Lake Winnipeg quite a bit, but you know, if you go just a little bit past, you know, up on Lake Winnipeg and then look to the east, there's so much water up here. And this is just a cheap, affordable destination. If you're looking for just phenomenal fishing on a budget, you can come up here and, and really have the time of your life and it just doesn't take much. It's a short drive and it's cheap once you get here. There we go. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> I can't really get the rod tip out of the water. Oh, come on. Wow. Look at that. I'm coming with the net. This is a big one. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Just doesn't want to come up. No starting to come here now. Oh yeah, see it? Yep. Oh yep. wow. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh my wow. gosh, I can just feel the weight of this yeah. one in the net. <laughs> yeah, let's get her out. <laughs> I knew as soon as I set the hook that this was gonna be a nice one. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's a nice fish. Yeah. Right in the, oh, look at that. That hook just fell out. Barbless hooks. Oh, look at that, isn't that just gorgeous? Big old hump back on her. All right, get her in the water here. All right. Look at that. <laughs> oh, that, that was All a, right, there you go, that nice fish, was Jason. a good one. I mean, yes. You know, one of those fish where you think you're snagged and then it starts to right, head shake. Right, right, those are always the best ones. You think you've hooked a rock and then you're like, oh, oh a that's rock a fish. A moving. <laughs> Beautiful. 
Jason Mitchell Outdoors is brought to you by these industry leaders. You can't choose the weather, but you can choose to dress for it. Introducing Blackfish Performance Rain Gear. Utilizing patented event technology, this advanced membrane allows body heat and vapors to escape while offering 100% waterproof protection with an exceptional combination of waterproof and breathability ratings. Blackfish Rain Gear keeps you dry all day. Whether on the tournament trail or chasing weekend walleyes, choose Blackfish because you can't choose the weather. Every day, it is you against the fish. From the fish hawk and pro tiller to the bass hawk and raptor, Crestliner's entire fleet is designed to maximize your pleasure and performance on the water. Handcrafted, continuously welded seams combined with high-grade heavy-gauge aluminum lead the industry with unbeatable engineering, strength, and durability. Crestliner has been catching fish for over 70 years. Crestliner, forged with strength, defined by durability. From the makers of the legendary Salmo Hornet, meet the new Salmo Freediver 9. Capable of reaching depths over 25 feet, the free diver has set the new standard for deep diving walleye crankbaits. See that free diver, that fish just, just mugged that bait. Individually handcrafted, tank tested, and tuned by Salmo artisans, every Salmo lure produces perfect action every time. Catch more fish with a new Salmo Free Diver 9. You've waited all winter for this. We can't wait either. You know, we're keeping our speed right around a mile an hour. If we slow down, these bottom balls are just get hung up in the rocks. And so you can see on the side imaging, there's a lot of big rocks out here. Just typical Canadian shield water. Fish in these boulders, you know, there's kind of an old adage with bottom balls, there's basically one ounce for every 10 feet of water. We're fishing 20 to 25 feet of water for the most part, but tell you what, we're even cheating that where we're even using heavier bottom balls and just getting them straight up and down. That way we can just kind of lift those heavy bottom balls up and over the rocks. If we drag these bottom balls at all, they're just gonna get snagged and we're, we're just destroying our hooks on these rocks because you know you take a fine point hook and you snag it on boulders, it's about shot. So we've been retying a little bit today. Oh yeah. Good one? This is a good one. All right, I'm coming with the net. I got the trolling motor turned off here now so we'll just drift with this wind here. Yep. Yeah, I think it's a little bit bigger than those other ones. All right. Oh, fish is waking up now. <laughs> Come on, let's see it. I haven't even been able to see your bottom monster yet. We're going to have to put you in for a raise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, here we go. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, look at that. Oh, one. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look at that fish. Oh. That's why you come up to the Canadian Shields Absolutely, right there. <laughs> in the bottom jaw. There we go. Yeah, <laughs> fish just have nice dark colors. That is nice. a beautiful walleye right there. Wow. Oh, All right. Beautiful fish. Let's, yeah, send let's her get back. her back in there. <laughs> yeah. All right. She kicked away strong. That was good. Yeah. Well, let's keep going. Let's keep cruising. You know, like a lot of Canadian Shield lakes, you could fish this every day for the rest of your life and still learn something new. The amount of structure out here is endless. There's so many different points and rock piles and just spots that look fishy. But with that being said, you know, when you're trying to learn water and trying to, you know, fish structure like this, especially in deep water, you know, I don't know if there's anything that just beats a bottom bouncer and a spinner because you can cover water, you can stay and maintain that bottom contact. 
and you can troll fast enough to find fish, but at the same time, you know, you're going to catch fish. And so we were using night crawlers. I'm sure like gulp or soft plastics tipped on those spinners that would have probably worked as well. But on a lot of this water, especially when you don't have good contour maps, a bottom bouncer and spinner is pretty tough to beat in July and August. Here we go. Got him? Yep, got him. Oh yeah. <laughs> nice thing about pulling them out of 25 feet of water is you get to enjoy them the whole way up. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, fun. What a beautiful place we're in too. You know, you look around, no boats. Oh yeah, look at there. No cabins, no nothing. Here she oh, comes. Yeah. No, they're nice. On there. Hey. <laughs> All right. Here. Settle down. We're going to let you go. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Can't even see that spinner. Gorgeous. And I tell you what, with barbless hooks, I think you have to put a little bit more pressure on these fish. Tighten your drag up a little bit and just winch them in because if you try to play them or go easy on them, these barbless hooks just pop right out. And that's one thing we've learned up here. Something that just takes a little bit of adjustment to get used to, but all right, nice fish. Here we go. Oh yeah. Don't you love that? All right. Bring that over there, Jason. Yeah, bring them right in here. Don't really know what we got here yet. Oh, there she is. Oh yeah. Oh, that's another nice one. Oh. I just love the color on them out here. They fight so hard. Hey, all right, nice. There we go. That one's too big to eat, too. These big well, ones are fun to catch, though. That's a good problem to have when they're too big to eat, in my opinion. Yeah. That one might be close, 17 inch slot. We can measure right here on the net. Eighteen. Yeah, just a little, over. A little over 18. All right. And so here we are, you know, late July, early August, you know, it's the dog days of summer. And so most of the walleyes that we caught or that we found, you know, they were, you know, that 18 to maybe 28, 30 feet of water. You get out in that deep classic structure and you're gonna find a lot of fish. And so it's just real classic, traditional walleye fishing. You know, don't outthink yourself in the sense of a big deep point looks good. It's gonna probably have fish on it. You're not gonna see a lot of other anglers out here and so the spots really don't get beat up. And what was interesting is there was a couple of reefs where there were you know, a couple of boats in camp that basically they just fished the same spot every day and they caught a lot of fish every day. You just can't sore mouth the fish on a particular spot because there's just new ones that are coming up on it all the time. To me, that was really intriguing. You know, that there's just a lot of walleyes in this system. Oh, there's a good one. All yeah, right. That's a good fish right here, Jason. All right, here. Oh, yeah. I'm going to slow us oh, down boy. here, and I'll be behind you with oh. the net. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah, it's diving under the boat on me. Oh, boy. Ooh. Okay. Oh yeah, look at that fish. Oh yeah. Hey. <laughs> just another gorgeous walleye. Oh yeah, just classic walleye fishing. If you look at, you know, if you look at an aerial view, you know there's islands, there's funnels, there's bars, but just, you know, 
15 to 25 foot structure. It seems like anywhere we find that on this lake, we're finding walleyes. Yeah, just another one of these gorgeous fish. I just love the color on them up here. Well, this one's a little bit big for us to eat, so. You know, one of the things that we discovered out here is when these fish are on deep structure, whether it's a point or a reef, whatever it is, you're gonna mark them on your electronics first off. But the second thing is once you found fish, you found fish. I mean, some of these humps and reefs are just covered with walleyes. And what was really cool about it is that the, the sizes were all mixed together. You know, there's maybe an old adage that the big fish swim with the big fish and the small fish are doing this over here. Tell you what, on these reefs out here, you catch everything. I mean, you catch fish to eat, you catch small walleyes, you catch medium-sized walleyes, you catch big walleyes. You know, it's just tremendous fishing, but I can't imagine how big some of these schools are. There we go. This one might be a good eater, Jason. Feels like another good one here, Jason. All right, I turned the trolling motor off. Just like clockwork, we got right back onto that structure. Yeah. Oh, that Boom. is a dinner one there. Oh yeah. Got another one over there, Jason? Yeah. Some of them hit it pretty hard. Yeah, I'm just gonna lift him in. Yeah, that's another nice one here. <laughs> that one dragged you to the back <laughs> of the boat. He might have been a little ambitious and hit it a little, you know, harder than he actually is yeah, size-wise. Right. That's why we're here. Yeah, they Fight just the are scrappy, up, don't they? There we go. <laughs> there we go. That might be. Yeah, a that fish might for the be an, another one for dinner. 16 inches. That's about as good as eating as there yeah. is. Huh? Now, what's really neat about this system being located in a provincial park is there's quite a few islands where there's actually campsites set up. And so if you wanted to, you could register at Q Lake Lodge, take your boat out and camp on these islands, you know, for extended stays. Or you can use these islands for shore lunch. And that's what we did. I mean, there's fire pits, there's picnic tables, there's even latrines or porta potties on these islands. And you can just pull up. And I mean, basically, we just brought a big jug of oil, a couple of frying pans, some canned potatoes and we ate like kings all week. I mean, there's no shortage of walleyes to eat. I mean, you can catch big walleyes, but you catch so many walleyes, so many, you know, perfect eating size fish that are right around, you know, 16, 17 inches. And I tell you what, when you're in the Canadian Shield, you're breathing that fresh air, you're in this beautiful place, you know, when you can kill an hour and a half and just eat this meal that's fit for a king, that's, that's good living. I mean, that's, that's something that I love when I'm up in Canada. So we're on a body of water that's just full of walleyes, but also what makes this system so intriguing to me is the multi-species aspect. And tell you what, it's tremendous smallmouth bass fishing. I love fishing for smallmouths. They're one of my favorite fish to fish for. I and mean, you couldn't build a more picturesque, beautiful spot to catch smallmouths. You know, the fish are just gorgeous. They fight hard. I tell you what, I've caught smallmouths in a lot of different places, but I don't know if I've ever seen smallmouths come from such a pretty place. It was just such a cool experience fishing up here. Q Lake Lodge, we're located on uh, Caribou Landing uh, in Nopeming Provincial Park. Uh, it is three lakes uh, with seven island sites, a campground, and a bunch of seasonals. Uh, we're mostly known for our walleye, smallmouth bass, and jackfish. The rentals here at the Q Lake are $75 per person per night Canadian. Um, and as well, if you don't feel like bringing your boat up the, the 13 kilometer road, we also have rentals that are available. Oh yeah, good fish here, Jason. All right. Oh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> just digging down so hard. <laughs> oh yeah, nice walleye. Here we go. Here we go. All right. <laughs> Doesn't get any better than that. No, it sure don't. I got a fish on over here, I think. Oh. All right, I'm going to get this one unhooked and okay. get it back in, and then I'll be with yours. <laughs> this is a good one here, too. Nice fish here. Yeah, I got a glimpse of it here. There we go. There we go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that was a well, that was a double, huh? Yeah, that was some fun action there. Two here, fish back to back. Grab her out of here. 
spunky one. And the bites are just cool. You know, you just rod loads up these nicer fish. You know, you almost think you're dragging into a rock and then it starts to move, but just a gorgeous walleye. Probably a situation too where your rod holder will probably catch just as many fish as you do holding the rod. One of those type of bites, which is pretty typical mid late summer. There. Right on the turn there. Yeah, turn right around and bam, bam. Through the 10 seasons we've uh, been here at the lake, uh, it has been uh, an amazing growing experience for myself to be surrounded by such a beautiful atmosphere and place. I'm giving me a different perspective and a more of a respect for what we have. For myself, it's, uh, it's home. And uh, it's, as caregivers for this place, we, uh, we treat it as such. There's some activity, you know, there's just, I'm gonna zoom in on this, but, you know, those could be rocks or fish. Sometimes you have to fish through a spot to know for sure, but you see clutter and you see rocks and you see the type of stuff that can hide fish. Sometimes I'll fish stuff like this, even if I'm not marking a lot of fish. That right there looks like a fish right there, right on the bump there. You got a big one? It feels pretty good, yeah. All right, I'm gonna lift mine in here. Yeah, I'm gonna hunt over there too. <laughs> yeah, I got a little one. Yeah. All right, I'm coming with the net. Oh, wow, what do you have there? <laughs> <laughs> Wants to rip the rod out of my hands, I know that much. All right. <laughs> yeah, that's that another, a... another one of those nice fish. All right, hold off your prize. Yeah. Man. That's beautiful. Hey. <laughs> Check that one out. Just another nice chunker right there. Those big fish are fun, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they just uh, load the they rod. They do not want to come up to the boat. These are some of the hardest fighting walleye that I've you know, ever played with up here. <laughs> it's just a good time. Uh, what a Canadian venture. Thanks for coming up, Brandon. Absolutely. Thank you for having me up here. Oh, this, this has is been a, a blast. You know, and this is, I mean, I'd never even heard of this place before. And that's the thing. There's so many hidden gems in this world, you know, and you don't matter how much you fish, no matter how many places you've been, there's always another rock to turn over. You know? Right. You know, they're all once in a lifetime trips up here. You can't, Absolutely. You can't do them all when they're all fantastic. And yeah, I mean, these pretty fish. cool place. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't had a boat around us. Right. No boats around, nonstop action. <laughs> You know, and it's it's very, you know, old school where we're not, uh, you know, we don't have a depth map or anything like yeah, that. We're no just going around, maps. Yep. finding these spots, a using marker electronics. marker probably been handy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> not much not to like. It's like traveling back in time. Yeah, absolutely love it. There we go. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, yeah. There we go. There we go. <laughs> All right. <laughs>